Hey everybody, what's going on? Astronomers have just found the closest black hole to Earth ever discovered, so stay tuned for that. Alright, welcome back. So, we just found the closest black hole to Earth that's ever been discovered, and it's about a thousand light years away. The galaxy is a hundred thousand light years in diameter, so this distance is only 1% of the entire width of the entire galaxy. They found it by monitoring a binary star system that was orbiting a central point of mass. And within this orbital system, they found that there's a missing point of mass that they believe is a black hole. So let's go to this article real quick and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Astronomers discover closest black hole to Earth and you can't see it. A newfound black hole may be the closest black hole to Earth and you can spot its cosmic home in the night sky without a telescope. The black hole which is lurking a thousand light years from Earth in the southern constellation of Telescopium belongs to a system with two companion stars that are bright enough to observe the, with the naked eye. But you won't be able to see the black hole itself. The massive object has such a strong gravitational pull that nothing, not even light, can escape it. So that's just that's just any black hole, right? Any black hole has gravitational pull so strong that light can't escape. That's why it's a black hole. And we can't really detect black holes directly, so we have to observe the effects that black holes have on its surroundings. So I'll get into that here in a little bit. So on how we can actually detect the black holes. Astronomers discovered this black hole while studying what they thought was just a binary star system, or two stars that orbit a common center of mass. Okay, so here's the picture of the night sky, and as we can see, we have a couple binary star systems, um, one right here, one right here, another one way up here, and as you can see, the black hole is obviously not evident. Uh, I can't see it at least, and if you can, you're better than me. So this black hole is about four solar masses. And so four solar masses isn't really massive enough to do gravitational lensing. And I'll get to that as well. And it also doesn't have an accretion disk. So it's very, very, very difficult to uh, see and observe this black hole without observing the orbital patterns of the stars in the system that it's in. So this is the binary star system that they were talking about. The black hole is denoted by this red streak right here. So the black hole is right about right here and the center of mass of these three bodies of mass is going to be right in the middle of this orbit right here. And so this black hole is much more massive than both of these stars combined. And that's, that's why the center of mass is so close to that black hole. Because if it wasn't, if, it was a, if these stars were so massive, then the center of mass would be closer to these two stars than the black hole itself. So that's, kinda, that's how they observed it. So they were monitoring the orbital patterns of these two stars and was like, hey, there's, there's missing mass here. And the black hole model is really the only thing that fit that description. And that's why their theory is that that's a black hole right there. Um, they calculated that the object is a stellar mass black hole, a black hole that forms from a collapse of a dying star, and it's about four times the mass of our sun. An invisible object with mass at least four times that of the sun can only be a black hole. The system contains the nearest black hole to Earth that we know of. And then this is how you can um, see the two stars. So the two stars are near the constellation Sagittarius and Scorpius and it's right here beneath Aura and above Telescopium. So it's right here, and let me make this a little bit bigger. So the two stars are right about here. So we can see the stars with our naked eye, but that's, we obviously can't see the black hole. So just real quick, I kinda wanna go into masses of black holes and kinda like what happens when a star dies. So. Stars less than 1.4 solar masses are going to die and, and evolve into what is known as a white dwarf. 
So basically that's just the core of the star and it's just radiating heat, but mm -hmm. basically it used up all its fuel so it's not um, putting out energy anymore. It's only really expelling the heat that it already has created. Uh, anything in between what is the 1.4 solar masses is what is called the Chandrasekhar limit. And anything exceeding that, that mass is going to collapse into a supernova and then go into a neutron star um, from 1.4 solar masses all the way up to 2.1 solar masses. And so right at 2.16 solar masses, that's what's going to be referred to as the tolman oppenheimer volkoff limit. And this is the limit of from which a neutron star can't sustain its own uh, weight, its gravitational forces. And so that's going to collapse into a black hole. So black holes can be anything from 2.16 solar masses to anything to 100 solar masses. And those are going to be our supermassive black holes at the center of our galaxies and whatnot. Um, so next up is like, how, how do we detect black holes. Well, one of the very first things that we can use is going to be is going to be gravitational lensing. And these black holes are so massive, they have such strong gravity that as photons, light particles are passing the black hole, the gravity will bend the light around the black hole. So it's kind of similar to a magnifying glass and how it bends light to focus the light into a single point. But in this case, it's just gravity that's doing the focusing. So it's bending the light around the black hole. And as you can see in this image, this is kind of this is a really good example of gravitational lensing. So that's one of the first methods of discovering a black hole. However, this black hole is only four solar masses, and it's not really strong enough to do a significant amount of gravitational lensing to where we can observe it on Earth. Um, the next is going to be what is called an accretion disk. An accretion disk is basically where gas and other particles are spiraling into the black hole. And as they're converting their potential energy into uh, kinetic energy, it also gets converted into some thermal energy. And so this gas that's near the black hole is going to heat up really, really quickly and irradiate thermal radiation. And that is depicted in this picture right here. So here we have the accretion disk that's orbiting around the black hole and the particles are getting spiraled in. And as you can see on the outside, this disk, it's really cold. It's cold and you can't really see it. And then as it's spiraling in, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And then we, right around the event horizon here, it's emitting a lot of thermal radiation. This black hole that we, uh, that we just discovered doesn't even have an accretion disk that we can observe either. So really the only way that we were able to observe this was to observe the gravitational effects that this black hole had on the binary star system that's orbiting it. And lastly, I kind of want to talk about like where this, uh, where this black hole even came from. So it's definitely possible that this black hole was a previous star and it collapsed, went supernova, turned into a black hole, and then as time went on, stars that got too close to it got captured in this gravitational pull and started orbiting it. And that's definitely one theory of where the binary star system came from and orbiting the black hole. Um, another one, another theory is that it was a triple star system to begin with. And this star was basically it was just three stars that were orbiting a single center of mass and since this star was so much bigger it expended its fuel more quickly than the other two went supernova created the black hole and when we're talking about a star that goes supernova it pretty much conserves its mass um, the radius is a lot smaller than what the star's original radius was but when a star com goes into a black hole the mass doesn't change and so the gravitational effects of those objects that are orbiting the black hole wouldn't change either. So like for instance, if our sun turned into a black hole right now, Earth would still orbit the sun in the same manner. 
I mean, we'd all die because, you know, the sun is our, the energy that we need to live. But basically, my point is that the star that went to the black hole, it wouldn't change the orbital pattern of the two stars around it. So as we're finishing up here, I just want to note that black holes are really, really, really interesting. They're one of the many mysteries that we have in this universe of ours right now. Like we can't really explain what a black hole is. We can explain its motion and we can explain its behavior, but we can't really explain like what is going on beyond the event horizon. And that's just due to the fact that like no information can escape from a black hole. So we wouldn't even be able to send any drones or anything into the black hole because nothing would be able to get back out. I plan on doing a few more videos on black holes because they're one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, and then I also want to talk about some neutron stars because neutron stars are awesome too. And I mean that's about it. So uh, if you like this video definitely hit like and definitely subscribe if you want to see more videos of black holes, neutron stars, or any other space news. So thank you.